Hello, I'm Dwight Norris, and today we're going to be fishing at Spot Pond in Massachusetts with the minnows. Stay tuned. So we're here at Spot Pond in Massachusetts, and previously I made a video about how to hook a minnow. Now, I have some shiners here that I got from Arlington Bait Shop in Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm gonna try them out. They are much bigger than the dead ones I have. But I'm gonna use those three techniques in the tail, in the back, and in the mouth to see which work best, particularly from the shore. So I try to get a boat over here and they're doing reservations only. So they're bucked up. So I gotta walk, you know, sucks for me. But I'm gonna try my best to get out here. And me and my son are gonna see if we can't get ourselves into some fish or just the only fish we catch are these. But we'll see. So. Hold on and we'll show you what's happening. So first off is right through the bottom lip and then, then through the nose. As you can see right here, he's lively and it's going right through the bottom of the lip here and then through the nostril. Now what I'm really worried about is when I cast this thing, is he gonna rip off his mouth, off his lips, or will he stay on? So um, I'll let you know. I don't have a stand right now for my phone but I'll try to get some live action going on here in a little bit. So my son's got the rod out here and he's got a nice little tight line on it. You can feel the, the little bit of a, you know, little jumps of the minnow. You don't want to get too like, you know, excited. Oh, I feel a little bite. Like, no, that's the minnow. The minnow's making the line shake a little bit, but it's not strong. It's like a little baby bluegill trying to nip at your, at your lure. That's what it feels like. So let that go. When a real like bass or a pike or something comes through there and takes it, it is going to either like take it and make it completely weightless and you won't feel anything or it'll just shred like a barracuda and just try to take off of it at lightning speed. So those are the two types of bite you really want to pay attention to. Complete lightness and all out holes barred like race car drag strip, which pretty much it hooks itself. So be very wary of when you feel nothing at all. Pick it up for our, a bite, I went to check the actual lure and it was hung on something. I don't know if it was the weight or what, but then I pulled it up and that minnow was gone. It's like, see a sucker. So, hmm, that's minus one for the double lip way. The next way I'm gonna try is through the tail. This is the other way to hook a minnow, right in the end of the tail. Now, if you stay still for a second, you'll see, yeah, right at the end, just above the backbone but not too far up because I just had one where I went too far up and it ripped right through his back of his tail. You have to get it just above the backbone. You almost have to feel the backbone, then go above it. If you don't see it bleeding when you do it, we let this puppy um, sit out there for about three minutes, maybe four. Still on there, unlike the mouth hook, which I already said in the previous how to catch him, how to hook a minnow video, that it's pretty fragile. Now the hook and the tail is the most popular part because they take in the head first, but then you have to make sure you wait after that initial bite so that they swallow the whole minnow and get the hook at the end. So this is the, the meatier part of the fish. You can also go to the back, but that kind of impedes their natural movement. So the tail is really preferred. A little tip for when you're moving spots is to not let your, your minnow stay out of the water while you're walking along the shoreline. You can stick it right in here with the weight and everything. Make sure it's alive and swimming. Close the lid. It's not going to crimp your line. And you know, just walk. Easy. Nice little chip there. So as you can see here, this puppy is still alive and kicking. Now wait, and he's real ready to go and ready to catch some fish, hopefully. So we're in some live stuff going on here. I got a nice little beach area, and I got the minnow out here. So I don't know if I'm going to catch anything. I haven't been to this place ever. This is my first adventure here in Spot Pond. I think we're in Medford or Stoneham. Can't figure out which one. Maybe a little bit of both. I'm gonna reel it in just to show you guys. What? I think I'm in the grass. Yeah, lots of grass. Forgot my minnow though. I got some grass 
still got it on here. It's still alive. Still kicking. And I'm gonna give it another cast. Hopefully something happens. I cast it.
carry the boat. The third one way is through the back. Uh, you see I've gotten here just below the surface here, not through the, the, uh, the lateral line, but through the top of the back. I might have gone a tad bit shallow here. You can probably go a quarter inch even lower to get more meat on the bone, as they say. And this will allow you to cast a little further. But if you're just dropping down and jigging, this should be adequate. Let's give it a try. Bald eagle sighting. Bald eagle. He's oh god, he's going on my head. Bald eagle at Spot Pond in Massachusetts. I saw him floating up like a, it looked like a mile in the sky, Bennett. So we gave it a good whirl here at Spot Pond in Stoneham slash Medford, Massachusetts, and didn't come up with any real results. But I did learn a, a few things. One of those things is when casting from shore. You have to be very, you know, gentle with the fish. You have to make smooth cast, not the, the, the hard jerk, which makes tension, kind of like a roller coaster here in the back, and the, and the head jerk gets you. That pulls the, the hook not only out of the hole, but through the body, which hurts it. It makes the hole bigger. It makes it easier to fall out on continuous cast. Now, I noticed when I was doing it a little too hard that the fish would fall off after about five to six casts. I would do the same nice smooth hook. I would try to throw it smoother each time. But by the time I got to that fifth or sixth one, minnow went one way, shiner, and then the hook went straight. And I was like, oh, well, it's only 50 cent each. But still, that's money, man. And that's money you could be using for something else. So be gentle when you're casting from the shore with a live minnow. And if you're doing a better thing, which is out in a boat, which I try to do, but here, you need to do reservations like many other places because people are trying to get out in nature, which is awesome. But that makes lines, and lines means I can't do what I want to do spontaneously. So maybe I should get my own thing. Inflatable boat's kind of big, kind of cumbersome, takes a little time. Maybe I should get myself a little stand, you know, a little sit on top paddle, sit on top uh, kayak for the family, you know, one for at least me and my son, maybe one for my wife. Hook it on top of the uh, roof rack when I get one of those. Gotta buy a proper vehicle that has a roof rack on it so I don't have to strap it onto the roof. I hope it doesn't scrape it up because it's a lease. Hmm. But anyway, pointnoisefishnetwork.com. Another day of fishing. Awesome. About to go on vacation. And you'll have some new videos coming up soon on Cape Cod with some saltwater fishing and some kettle pond fishing, which should be pretty cool. But until then, you can go to fishingatwork.com and go right below the fold on the page. You'll see a PDF download called 10 Step Process to Go Fishing at Work, which is totally free. Don't even have to give me your email. That's my gift to you for free. Take it, learn, try it out, then tell me how it went. I want to know. I want to know if you're making progress. I want to know if you're changing your life. I want to know if you're going fishing more often. I want to know if what I'm providing right here is of value to you. And if it's not, comment down below and say, Dwight, yeah, it's kind of boring. I want to see you out there fishing, catching nothing. That's not fishing for some people. And for some people, that is fishing. Because people have different, you know, things they want to do. They want to relax or they want to catch fish one or the other. But you can also go down to the bottom of the page if you need, bottom of my webpage, if you need more help, which is a whole video course called the Everyday Fishing System, which I will teach you how you can go fishing every day if you take the right steps and prepare and deal with all the self-limiting beliefs that you have about your work, your life, and your family that keeps you from doing what you want to do today. And I can help you change that. So go there if you need that kind of help. Anyway, get fishing.